Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. You know, if there's one thing we've learned when filming Wild Kingdom, it's that nature can be harsh. Not all animals are strong and healthy enough to survive. In tonight's episode, we'll explore the relationship between predators and prey. Each plays an important role in keeping animal populations in check. The old and sickly animals are naturally weeded out, leaving the strong and healthy to produce the next generation. In fact, birds of prey like this owl are only successful about 50% of their attempts to catch food in the wild. This reality can seem harsh, but it's absolutely necessary to create that delicate yet natural balance of animals in the wild kingdom. So sit back and relax and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Of all the animals in the Wild Kingdom, probably the most appealing is the fox pup. Friendly, playful, cunning, and inquisitive. He has survived mainly by outwitting his enemies, and there may even be more of these animals alive today than there were in the colonial times. You'll find the red fox throughout most of the United States and Canada, and many times, even almost in your own backyard. This little guy is about 10 weeks old and he's large enough to be on his own. But he probably grew up in a den that looks something like this. They're usually located up on the top of a small hill and there are quite a few entrances to the tunnels. The tunnel itself is between 10 and 15 inches in diameter and sometimes 10 feet deep. About four feet from the surface, there's usually a grass-lined room and this is where the pups are raised. Sometimes there are other rooms for the storage of food. We found a den in central Wisconsin with three pups in it, and when they explore the wild kingdom for the first time, there's trouble, humor, excitement, and sometimes near tragedy. It's a fascinating story, and one that we call the tale of the fox. It all began on the edge of a remote cattail-bordered lake where I spotted a male fox taking a drink. It's early spring, and even though ducks are plentiful, they're never safe when a fox is near. It was a close call, but once the ducks are in the water, the fox doesn't have a chance. Since it's spring, the fox probably has a family nearby. I took to the water to see if I could locate the den. A couple of black bear cubs watched me float by just as I spot a movement on the hill above them. It's a vixen fox cleaning her den. At this time of year, I know that she must have young. This is just what we're looking for. It took several days to carefully build a blind so that we could observe the family close at hand. Just as I settle down to begin my watch, the female comes in carrying a blackbird in her mouth. As she nears the den, she utters a strange mewing sound. I get my first glimpse of a pup. He knows that the mewing call means food. Suddenly, the den erupts with activity. Two other pups burst out, and they're a lot less shy than the first one. 
the several den openings give them a fine opportunity for a game of hide and seek. Much to my surprise, one of the pups is silver black, a rare and beautiful color phase of the red fox. At this age, they've got a lot of surplus energy. But mother can't quite keep up with the pup's enthusiasm. When Blackie tries to make her join the game, he soon realizes that he should have left well enough alone. There's nothing like a foot in the stomach and a nip on the nose to end the session of roughhousing. The parents have to do a lot of hunting in order to take care of their growing young. At this age, the energetic pups build up appetites quickly. The female must be a skilled hunter, for in a short while she has successfully caught a large snowshoe hare. Again she mews as she approaches the den, and out pops a sensitive nose. This meal is just too big for a small pup to handle. A little help from mother solves the problem. A rabbit like that should be enough for anyone. But there are those who are afraid there won't be any second helping. Hey, that's my rabbit. But young Red is thinking only of his stomach. Blackie is thinking of his stomach too. Keeping a solid rear end toward the opponent seems to be the best defense. For Red, it's first come, first serve. The family of foxes had accepted our presence by now and continued their normal activities. The mother fox is off on another hunting trip. She's always on the move to keep the pup satisfied and finds this steep riverbank a likely place. A red squirrel that's been looking for buds in an elm tree climbs down. It could be a mistake. It is a mistake. The mother fox sees the squirrel, and a scramble for life follows. A last second effort, a last dash for safety. The squirrel survives, for now, in his treetop refuge. While their mother searches for other game, the young fox pups continue to play around the den. As the pups grow up, they move farther and farther from the den to investigate the surrounding area. We followed them into a meadow one afternoon and found them full of curiosity. We had placed our blind so that we had a full view of the entire area. What a pleasant place to explore. There's not a square foot of their new playground that gets overlooked. Here's something that bears careful investigation. It's a harmless garter snake, but a big one. The 
the speed of his strike is too much for young Red. He's back soon and brother Blackie is with him. The snake takes on the new challenger. That's enough for both the young pups and for the snake too. The pups romp farther away. Without realizing it, they're developing their muscles and reflexes, learning the first steps in how to hunt. What kind of a rock is this? Or is it a rock? It moves. To the fox's sensitive nose, the scent of the turtle is as interesting as its slow movement and armor covering. The turtle, losing its fear of the pup's curiosity, proceeds on its way. What's this? It's more than curiosity that prompts Blackie this time. He's a hunter, a little clumsy to be sure, but he's new at this. And besides, the frog is slippery. But persistence pays, and he makes his first kill. On the far side of the field, a mother porcupine and her young porky. They're dull-witted, but sharp-quilled, and those quills make them something to be reckoned with. Red decides to investigate this strange-looking object. It's something new in his experience. Is this part of it? No. But he quickly learns that the tail of a porcupine packs a stinging wallop and leaves pointed reminders on the end of his nose. Not taking any chances, the young porcupine climbs a small tree. Red doesn't seem to know when to quit. He just has to try again. Red finally gets the point and moves off. It's been a shaky experience for Porky too and seems to be getting shakier. But easy does it and He's off to rejoin his mother in the dense woods. The foxes travel along the river each day, so I watch the banks closely. Ahead of me, I hear strange cries. A baby otter, only a few weeks old, is calling for his mother, who is probably nearby. Even at his age, he's a good swimmer. Then I see why he's frightened. Blackie and Red, our intrepid explorers, have found his den. Failing to find his parent, the otter heads for the den. There could be trouble here, for a young otter can take care of himself if necessary. Foxes sense that this stranger should be approached with caution. An instinct tells the baby otter that he had better head for the safety of his log. The foxes don't know it yet, but big trouble is on its way. They evacuate just in time.
mother otter satisfies herself that whatever was there is no longer around. She's given the pups a good scare. A frightened young fox had better look where he's going. Poor Red. The humiliation is almost too much. After a long day of exploring, he learns that there's just no place like home. The cubs are about 10 weeks old, and it's time to accompany their parents on the hunting trips. In this way, they will learn the skills and techniques that will make them successful hunters. On these early outings, the family usually hunts fairly close to the den. As the pups grow older, they will increase their range. Now, under the watchful eye of mother, they are probably after mice. Fair game for young foxes. The hunt is half play, half serious. The mice seem to be scarce today. A sleeping bear cub is certainly no mouse. This is really big game. It's a new experience for both the bear and the foxes. All three of them are cautious. The bear seems friendly enough and like he might want to play but the pups decide they'd better not hang around long enough to find out. While I was covering the river, I saw that the vixen had caught a ground squirrel and was waiting on the bank to feed her pups. Now the contest is on, but this time there's no play involved. It's winner take all. The two are equally matched, though Red is the victor this time. It's clear that their puppy days are drawing to a close. Competition for food is too great. Soon, they'll have to do the hunting to survive. Just downstream, three young raccoons are doing a little exploring on their own. They're good swimmers, but it looks as if the current might be too strong for the small one. Young raccoons are just as playful as young foxes and their predators as well. When the two foxes come along, their reaction to the raccoons is very interesting. They show no instinct to attack and apparently don't consider raccoons an easy meal. Still, the foxes are curious as to what these creatures are. That tail is just too inviting. Ouch! That's going too far. Their 
there's no meal here, and the foxes move on in search of better game. Summer is drawing to an end. By now, the pups are nearly full grown. They can consume about a pound of meat at a time, which means hunting has become serious business. They no longer hunt together. Each goes his own way, intent on his own kill. Red's keen nose quickly picks up the scent of the rabbit. A rabbit seems always to be running for his life. This one's chances of escape seem slim. Today, young Red proves he can survive by his own hunting skills. Blackie, meanwhile, has yet to prove his ability as a hunter. Judging from the pheasant's short flight, Blackie must have wounded it. Relying on his keen ears and sensitive nose, he quarters the area much the way a hunting dog does. If the bird's in there, he'll find him. The pheasant takes cover. Its protective coloring blends with the background. But the young fox isn't fooled, and he flushes his prey. The bird makes another run for safety, with Blackie right on his trail. of the wild and is now on his own. With this year's litter raised and scattered, the mother resumes her life. The pups start a new one. I've wanted to tell the tale of the fox for a long time and for several reasons. First, because he's brought me many enjoyable hours as I've watched him over the years. And second, because I think he's an important part in the plan of nature as a small predator. As we continue to invade the wilderness areas, man hunts him, chases him, and tries to trap him. Still, the fox manages to hold his own in spite of us. In so doing, there are few animals who appear more often in the age-old tales and stories of man than the fox. His craftiness, his cunning, his hunting skill, his speed, and his daring exploits have made him a living legend. A legend that I hope will continue to live as long as there's a wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. It's Mutual of Omaha. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.